I'm here with the Bridgeport family, Sister Oliver and Uncle Stu over here. Oh man, I can't do that. I ain't got my hair all clean. <laughs> That's Mitch. Mitch. And <laughs> John. John and of course Kyle. Kyle. We went up the Gami River together, Kyle. Sure good did. to see you, sir. Sure, sure. Good to see you again, too. <laughs> went up the Kunta Kinders village. We did. It's been too long. It's good to finally have you, have you down here. Yes, sir. So, uh, Aunt Olivia, you were saying in the old days you had to chop the cotton and you had to pick the cotton. Tell us the difference between chopping the cotton and picking the cotton. Okay. There was two phases in chopping the cotton. The planters would plant it, and but it didn't plant. It, it was just a continuous uh, row of seeds, and then you would have to thin the cotton. When it got to be uh, maybe three, four inches tall, you would have to thin it. How would you do that? We would have a hoe, and we were given instructions on how many plants to leave and how much space to leave between the plants. How old were you when you started doing that? I guess I was about maybe six or seven. Amazing. So you're out in the field at six or seven? Of course. Yes, we had to. And what's the weather like? What's the temperature like at that time? Sometimes it would feel like it was 102, but it, I mean, it was hot. Wow. And you had no shade. And we all had, my, uh, my grandfather and, and would make sure that we all had... Uh, Straw hats. What we had the huge, the big straw hats that, that he had, and all of us had one. Amazing. And what was your grandfather's name? Isaac. Isaac Bridgeforth. Yeah. Old Man Ike, they called him. Old Man Ike. So yeah. it, was a, it was a grand family affair. Oh, yes, it was. Now tell me the difference. So you've chopped the cotton, and that is the space tire to take the weeds out. In those days, you have no pesticides. No, we did not. No herbicides. herbicides. No, we didn't. We didn't, you know, and we would, uh, and then as the cotton continued to grow, we would weed it. I got to run to Decatur real quick. I'll be back. Um, Decatur Road, across the river. I got to run there. Okay, good. I'll, I'll be, be back, man. I'll be here. All right. Then we would weed. Good to see you again. again. Oh, hold, hold, hold on. Man, I didn't know it. <laughs> so, Kyle, we got a lot of stuff to talk about. We do. Check what I just texted you, Dr. Wanky, and then we'll get back. Sounds good. I yes. will. Yeah. I'll see because you I, Because I got something in the uh, house for you. Okay, then after, uh, as, after, after we had thinned the cotton and as it continued to grow, oh, you know, I'm gonna, we were weeded. Here, so I, yes. and, uh, one and then I when go, it uh, started, gotta go drop when they, what, what do you call the squares? When they got started getting squares, so just before the bones, they, uh, they gave uh, us the cotton balls would go, yeah. Yeah. then You're that's when we could, yeah. what my so grandfather got, called, we would lay by. Oh no! I, I didn't that say means that, you know we didn't have to chop the cotton anymore. Yes, indeed. And uh, then they would uh, continue, to, and then uh, they would, you know check it and uh, check the bowls on how much uh, you know how much cotton would be. You know, the, my grandfather and daddy could look at it and know about what kind of yield you were going to have, but I didn't. But I was just hoping it, it would grow so that I wouldn't have to chop it anymore. Amazing. So let me ask you this: so all the family. Boys and girls will be in the field. Yes, everybody but the babies. Uh, how old? Uh, how old in the morning would you have to get out? How? Leave home. <laughs> <laughs> we would get up about. Uncle Stu, you'd be out at uh, five or six years old too. Uh, you'd be out at that young, five or six years old. Yeah. And what time in the morning you get out? Four o'clock, five o'clock. Yeah, that's about the same time I get up, man. Oh really, I'm, I'm true. I back then. Six o'clock, um, you was up and ready to go. Amazing. Yes. What about you, uh, Mitch? Yeah, the same thing. I don't know what time it was. I just get up and everybody get up and go. You know? <laughs> and uh, what time of year was this? Springtime. Springtime. Right. And so what time would you pick the cup? Was it the same time, springtime? Uh, about uh, oh, August. Late, the fall, you know. Late yeah. this time uh, October, August you know? or... Uh, Early September. So you're picking the cotton when it's really hot. Summer still, kind of. You know, it's still hot. When you pick it's still hot? Yes. Tell us a little bit of what you did back in those days when you didn't have all these machines and all these herbicides. What is that like? <laughs> well. And this is this is John Bridgeworth. Yeah. Okay. And and uh, who's the senior who's the senior uh, of you here, of the three boys, Stu, John, and Mitch, from Mitchell. 
Oh, okay. Nice, nice. Can't get, can't get that star. Right 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 can take more years than that. Get that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I went to the field when I got big enough to walk. You went into the field when you got big enough to walk. Amazing. Amazing. Well, the first thing we did was pull boats. So, so, so the bag, the bag, you pull the bag with you and put it in, yes, put a rope on it. It would come. Put we it didn't get a snowball bag. Yes, yes, yes. The snowball bag had a strap on it. Yes, sir. We'd have to make our own strap to our bag. And then you do how many rows? Oh, shit. Sometimes we didn't have no rope. Just go with it. It looked like the thickest cotton. <laughs> <laughs> And how long would you work? How long would you work during the day? How long? Yeah. Depends how long the sun stays. I work from sun up to sun down. Sun up to sun down. So you said to me you'd work from sun up to sun down. Right. Amazing. Sun up to sun down. Wow. Now, in summer when it was extremely hot, we didn't work that many hours. Okay. We and start I, early, but. Well, it depended on you, though. Yeah. Papa was assigning you so much to do. Yes. And you, that's what you had to do. Amazing. And, and uh, Olivier was saying that the school term or the school semester was, uh, let's say, altered to suit the, uh, yeah, the season. Farmers. The yes. farmers. So you did six months or six weeks. In the summer. Okay. And then we uh, were out six weeks in the fall. I see. At the beginning of the fall. And uh, then we would go back. And sometimes we were late going back to school because the crops weren't uh, finished. Uh, Doris making faces. But well, Doris, <laughs> come, Doris, you come over here. <laughs> but no, we would. Doris is brought me some cake. You know, we wouldn't be finished. Okay. And uh, you know we would have to uh, have finish the crop. Uh, the uh, harvesting the crop. But you know what was interesting? Yes. Is that there was. I don't know if it was a contest or what, but the farmers in the area always wanted to see who would get the first bale of cotton. And I can only remember one time when we got the first bale of cotton. Amazing. The, the Bridgeport farmers got the first bale. Of How much does a bale weigh? Five hundred pounds. That's a yeah, lot of that's cotton. That's a gene. lot of cotton. Okay, so that's a, the seed's been removed at that time. Yeah. Okay, did you have your own gin, your own cotton gin? No. Okay, so when you pick the cotton, where would you put it? You put it in a truck and then you carry it somewhere? Take it to the gin. Okay. Take it to the gin. Yeah. So the gin was like a cooperative or what? Uh, or somebody owned it and you paid them to? Yeah. Okay. And once you paid them to, to, to gin the cotton to take the seeds out, what did you next do? What did we do? Yeah, did, did you then take it back and brought it somewhere else to sell? I think it's a it's warehouse. Yeah, it's a warehouse. Okay. Okay. What's your so, first name again? It's Gabriel. Gabriel, okay. Oh, you can call me Gabe. All right, Gabe. But you don't understand, this is kind of like, these are farm community. You know, this is what everybody did all around. This is what our neighbors did, and the people go to school with. This is what everybody did. Yes, you know? sir. As far as having that split session, they could do that because. Most of the landowners here, big landowners, they don't want to have political clout. They can, they can fix the school system or the school day just like they want it. They do it to their benefit. Everybody was farm workers and what you call uh, sharecroppers and that kind of thing. That's what was going on back then. Yes, sir. That's why they do anything they want to do as far as the school. They, but this was back in the 50s and early 60s. Yes, sir. Of course, they finally stopped it. it just, but it took a lot just to stop doing that, you know. Well, the only reason they stopped that because technology came along. They came up with cotton pickers and all kinds of different ways to, to plant a crop. So they didn't need that kind of labor anymore. I see. So technology. So they decided to let people go to school in and they changed that. You know, it's, a, it's kind of a backwards thing to do if you ever get back and thinking about it, you know. Yes, because your, your school was altered to suit the season. 
Right, they didn't get that much. And the farmers. There's no was, education to tell you the truth, not for uh, not for black people anyway. You know? Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. not as that is. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. It's, it's a lot. It's a deep thing, and uh, they give me a little bit of pieces of it. But if you really had to go back and look at this whole thing, you would really be amazed. You know, I mean, you probably know you've been around Africa. I mean, they don't have a lot of things in there. It wasn't necessarily right, like apartheid and different things. Yes, sir. This is similar to that. Yes, sir. And it takes a lot to get away from that. You see. I asked uh, Brother Billy yesterday, we went by the Tennessee River, and I said, uh, Brother Billy, when you're growing up, did you go by the river and hang out and picnics? He said, well, not quite. I said, well, why not? He says, well, it's for other people, you know? And, um, you know, I, I, I understand, but I understood what he was saying. Right here, I spot right down the road. <laughs> What's called? Tell us about. Tell us about that spot. Well, tell us about that. <laughs> that, that. That's called boat landing. Okay. And then uh, Beulah Bay. Beulah Bay. Beulah Bay. Beulah Bay down there. Okay. So t what did you do? With, what did you do at Beulah Bay? Uh, what did you do at Beulah Bay on the weekend? You went down there. Whenever you get a chance. <laughs> that was a swimming. That's where we had picnics and you know okay. different. Actually, it really was a picnic area. Why? Wow, you know that was. That was just the name of the, you know, they were beautiful, man. Yeah. Was that just for the Bridgeford family or was that? Yes, public. Okay, public? Yeah. Okay. So the school you went to, uh, John, tell me, was the school on the far Bridgeford farm or you went to school somewhere else? No, we walked a mile and a quarter of the school. Okay. It was right up to up on the next road up there. In those days, was the school already integrated or was it segregated? Oh, no. I never got to see integrated. You never got to see integrated? I, I didn't either. <coughs> okay. See what? And it, when schools were integrated, we went to segregate. Only time I went to school integrated was at Calhoun. Mm -hmm. And the first time I went to a school today mm -hmm. was with black and white. What was that like back in those days? Were people friendly? People a little no. upset? Or? On the average, I don't think people even paid it no attention unless somebody... Highlighted it. Yes, indeed. Uh, if, it, if it was there, you know, it was kind of easy. Of course, uh, there were times like when we started the students from Black Progress. Yes. Uh, that didn't go very well, but it, it happened. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm going to ask a question because, you know, the Bridgeford Farm and the Bridgeford family is very well respected. The more and more people learn about it. I. Remember PJ is who introduced me, PJ Haney is who introduced me to Billy and to Kyle and to Carlton. And of course, Billy allowed me to take the two boys to Africa. And I always said, man, what was he thinking about? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, they came back alive. And so the question I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask Doris. I'm going to go across the table. Brother Mitchell, Mitch, sure. what would you account for the success of the Bridgeford family at the time which we know were different, things were different? People had their prejudices and everything else, but yet the Bridgeford family was able to succeed. Give me your thoughts on why you think, and I'll go around the table and ask the same question. Okay, I'm going to have to think about that a little bit, which I'm thinking about while you're asking, you know. Okay. It's kind of, um, it kind of goes back a long way, and I guess a lot of times it's just what I would, what one generation passed along to the other generation. Yes, sir. The most fortunate thing, I guess, is that uh, we've had land, you know, may not have as much land. Of course, it had as much land then as we did now, and uh, plus with a lot of family members, we had a lot of a lot of us could work. You know, we had a bunch of fellas, you know, all the brothers and sisters who worked. You know, and that's the way we could make it. And we were a lot different from a lot of people because other people were sharecroppers, which we worked in our own land. That kind of helps us, and, and this is basically what we learned how to do. That's what we did. I mean, Billy was the youngest in our generation, of course, and. Uh, he may not know everything, but he's just a young man when all this is going on. You know? Billy told me he is a baby, is that true? That's true, that's yes, true. Billy's baby. So he don't really see what all, he don't even know what all happened. You know, he don't know what happened back in the <laughs> 50s and 60s because he wasn't born, of course. Yeah. You know, great, they don't know exactly, they're just young. You know, he came yeah. up at a different time, you know. Yeah. You get a little bit off the subject there, but back, I just think they were able to hold us, the land they had in the family and just kind of handing it down. You know, my grandfather, you know, now he, he knew about farming because he went to Tuskegee Institute. Maybe. He learned this trade, you know, and he just, he knew that bit. So he maybe uh, studied under Dr. George Washington yeah, Copper. Absolutely, that's exactly what he did, you know. Yes, sir. He only, he only went, a, maybe not, I think he maybe went two years, you know. Mm -hmm. And then they kind of, then 
you just kind of pass it on to my father, and my father passed it the same thing with us. We do this all the time. You know? So you're talking about three things I can take out of what you said. Uh, number one, that you had land. You were not sharecroppers. The other folks were sharecroppers, but you're working for yourself. Number two, your, great, your grandfather went to Tuskegee, so he had some education in agriculture. And number three, you have a whole bunch of fellas. Well, don't forget the ladies now. <laughs> we had a lot of ladies. You know, most of the fellas, she said she did it. She did a little bit, you know, just to babysit them more than anything else. These fellas with us, we were the kind of kid to work and everything. So it's just a different kind of thing. You know, we just work. You know, we always brought up to, to work. You know, yes, sir. Did. Now, you know, you never think about it when you start working. You know, you don't think about why you're working. Just do it because it's what you that's what, what you do, you know. So yes, sir. So you had to work. You had a you had a healthy work ethic. Right, you got to, you got to. And it well, just added, you know, I ain't never thought nothing much about it. Just went up and went to work. That's just like most people do, you know. Well, I ain't mean to go off in too far. I began no, to get back to ask the original. Question. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> you, did, you did okay. You did okay. I'm going to go with the brother John. You did well. Brother John, you heard what Brother Mitch said. <laughs> you want to add anything to that as to what uh, factors you think accounted for the success? of the Bridgeford family farm? Well, basically that's what it was. It was family. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, there was children furnished the label, and we only hired uh, Papa. He, he get, uh, I think, a couple of the cousins of the older folks. Yes, sir. Kind of help us out. Yes, sir. And we got in the hand. But uh, most of the time, we, it was the children that made it. So you didn't have to hire much because you had the, the workforce inside the family. Yeah. I see Brother Mitch has his hand up. I just want to, I just want to explain something, you know. When he say Papa, he's actually talking about our grandfather. We call him Papa because that's what our daddy called him Papa. You know, that's not what <laughs> <laughs> we say Papa, they think we're talking about our father. Your father, father. Yeah. We're talking about our grandfather. When you say Papa, we'll you say, say Papa, Daddy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's kinda, I just thought about the you know. You said something to me, uh, Brother John, that I want to focus on for a bit because you're all you're the senior one in the family right now yeah okay so you you go back to the 50s you remember that time yeah, a little bit. yeah. but you said you formed you were part of an organization called black students for progress tell me about that well that was uh you know i really don't want to know how it started and just a bunch of students got together mm -hmm. and uh Decided that uh, it, oh, I, we were going to try to get the uh, black history talkings at the college. That's what it started with. Yes, sir. And uh, that's what that's how that group came about. Yes, sir. And uh, it, of course, it worked. So you know, I mean, the yes, ultimate end. It uh, and, well, it was still. I guess it might still be going on over there now. Oh, I mean, you know, those things now, I mean, <laughs> black history, now, I mean, even when I grew up on the island, it was all history of England and the Queen. All our books have to have a picture of the King and Queen on the cover. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were taught that uh, we were British and uh, they never taught us anything about Africa or black history. We got, we had, well, we had Marcus Garvey and we had people who were talking, but a lot of our ideas on black pride came from the United States, from Martin Luther King. Uh, reading Jet magazine, Ebony magazine, and uh, I remember when Martin Luther King was killed, I was in elementary school. I was about eight years, seven years old, but I remember it was a big deal. Right. Um, so that's how, you know, and then of course we'd always be happy to hear about a guy called Cassius Clay. Not many right. people know who that was. <laughs> who was Cassius Clay, Olivia? Do you know who that was? Muhammad Ali is yes. Cassius Clay. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Because he was Cassius Clay first. That's right. That's and then right. He, was he changed his name, you know. So, Brother Stu, tell me, uh, growing up here in Tanner, you on your own farm. I mean, Brother Billy told me that you've got a church, and your grandfather or your great grandfather is buried behind the church. Yeah. Not many people can say that. You know, yeah. that's impressive. Well, that is fa that's the family Bridgeport Cemetery. That's that's the name of it. That's so, up there. This goes back. Back in there, wow, in eight, 1800, a few 1800 graves up there. That's right. So you got family graves going back to the 1800s behind that church. I said it again. You got you got family graves that go back to the 1800s. Yeah. That's amazing. Because yeah. my, grand, uh, my grandmother's father is there. I see. And so... Uh, town, he was a town. Yeah, he, but he, you know, my grandmother was a townsend. 
but uh, he's he's also buried in that. They're buried. His because his because uh, George and Jen is also mm -hmm. and Grandma and uh, Grandma's parents were also buried there. You know, so they because they actually lived in this community. That's right. So tell me the importance of heritage, knowing that you go back several generations. I mean, you and I are like what fifth, sixth generation. I, I believe they're fourth. Okay. We're fourth. And 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 Kyle and his guys would be fifth. Well, yes, yes, Kyle, okay. Kyle is fifth. And who, who's who? And, and you're six. And, yes. and no, no, she's fifth. No. Brianna is, is is six. Because she's in the same generation as Kyle, aren't you? Me? Yeah. No, mommy's six. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, she's thick. So she's thick. So this this makes a big difference to heritage, knowing that you have a strong heritage. That makes a big difference in success. Yeah. Yeah. What about family pride, knowing that you're a breach fourth? That, that was a big thing down here, doesn't it? Everybody know who you are. Let's say that again. That you're a bridge fourth. That that was important because people knew who you were. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was a well-known name. In some cases, a well-hated name. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's good. Tell me how it wasn't good, uh, Olivia. It's advantage to that every now and then. I know nobody wants to talk to those rich folks, girls. They think they're better than anybody else. You know, oh, okay. You know, that type of, uh, it was sort of like a, a jealous image. They, they, th they thought you were bourgeois or something? You know, so, but... Uh, is that what it is, Brother Major? You thought you were bourgeois? Yeah, people thought, of course, but it wasn't like that. I didn't ever think too much of it myself. They really didn't think along those lines, you know. Yes, sir. But sometimes, you know, I guess, um, mm. yeah, I guess, you know, I guess we didn't, I wouldn't think too much about pride and then, you know, I guess sometimes you grow up and everything, you got your mind on a lot of other things, you know, yeah. just growing up. And just... But, you know, one thing I want to say, Uncle Stu, is I speaking to Billy, Billy comes across as very humble and very polite. You know, he doesn't come across as someone who thinks I'm all that in a bag of chips. You know, he's very uh, casual and humble, prayerful. Uh, Is that how you brought up? That's good. That's good. You know, I guess you have to practice that kind of, that kind of attitude, I guess, sometimes. But yeah. Yeah. he is rather humble. You know, they are. They are. Kind of Do you believe that in a family of success, as you have had success, it's important to be humble and to be uh, sort of uh, polite, in allowing for your continued progress? Uh, absolutely, always. I mean, De definitely, definitely. definitely. Like, thank you. You know, I would, I would, I, you know the, uh, to add to what John and uh, Mitchell had said is that, you know, there was, that, and it still is, there was a lot of prejudice. And, you know, and um, like you said, the, they were, there was a lot of, there was respect for daddy and papa you know, a long time ago, and so not everybody was prejudiced against my father and and my grandfather, and they would actually help them to do, see, Daddy could acquire things and get things done, not because he initiated or my grandfather initiated it, it's because there was help from the other people. The white folk. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's... I mean, yes. Let's, let's say it like it is, if it was true. White, from the white 